Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again. In today's video, my idiot neighbor repeatedly vandalized and ran over my mailbox. I once had enough and taught him a lesson to ruin his vehicle. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the story. At my old house, I used to have this long-standing feud with my neighbor. He was the definition of a trash human being, but I was willing to get over that if he just left me alone. He wanted to start fights with me at every turn and it would be about anything no matter how small. One time he tried to call the city on me for my dogs barking, yeah, not barking in the middle of the night or trying to bite anybody, but instead just for barking while outside in the middle of the day while playing. The city didn't do anything about it, which just made him more annoyed and feeling like he needed to get back at me. Most of the stuff he tried to pull was trivial and childish. He blew his leaves onto my yard instead of just cleaning them up himself. One time he turned on a chainsaw at an ungodly early hour and it was not even to do any work with it. He just turned it on and let it run for the sole purpose of being noisy and annoying. When things just seemed to happen, I knew that he was always the person behind it. There was no talking or reasoning with the man either, because he was stubborn and also dumb as a post. He walked around with a permanent confused look on his face. His crap went from childish to serious the minute he got that stupid ass semi truck. One thing about this guy was that he was horrible at trying to keep any sort of job. I don't know if that was because of his personality or lack of a brain or what, all I know is every single time he got a new job he would celebrate and throw a loud and obnoxious party where I would find trash on my lawn the next day. This happened more times than I can count, he got a job hauling stuff with a semi truck and he seemed just excited to have this new toy. He would blast a horn and laugh when it scared people passing him by. And he would drive it around the neighborhood for no real reason but to be annoying and scream for people to get out of his way. This is when he got the bright idea to start using his truck to destroy my mailbox. I had the kind that sits at the end of my walkway, so it's close to the street. He just jumped the curb a little with the truck and flattened it into nothing. I got really mad at this and tried to tell him off for it but he did not want to hear anything I had to say. He was just in his own little happy world where he could do anything he wanted. Me, I saw you destroy my mailbox with your truck. Do you have any idea how stupid that was? Neighbor, I wouldn't speak to me without some respect anymore. Who knows what else I can run over with this bad boy. He just had no sense of right or wrong, maybe he did not care. Either way, I needed to get a new mailbox and there was no way I was getting him to give me the money for it. So I went and got a new one only to find it destroyed two days later. I had an idea and the next time I got a mailbox I decided to install a camera outside my house. I got it on tape this time that he destroyed my mailbox with his truck. Then I got another mailbox and watched the process repeat. And then a third one. To him I was probably being stupid but I had a plan and I had to get him comfortable to make sure that it would work. My family had always been the people tinkering with things and making stuff. While he was busy with his mindless destruction I was in my garage working on something. I was making something that looked exactly like a mailbox and could function as one. Instead of wood and aluminium, this thing was made of solid concrete. Thick too, so it could not get knocked over and instead would teach him a lesson. I installed it and it looked really good. I made sure to use enough concrete to make it really stay in the ground too, then I waited for either a sound or to come home and see the video. I heard the crash and cursing of my neighbor, so I went outside to see what he was up to. The front of the truck had a huge dent and he was swearing up and down that I ruined his truck and I had to pay for it. Me, I'm not paying you a cent, you shouldn't have been hopping onto my property and trying to knock over my mailbox. Neighbor, this truck was brand new, I needed it for work and you're going to get my ass fired. You better give me the money to fix it right now or I will sue you for everything. Me, okay then, sue me. He tried to and I also had a lawsuit filed against him with my videos being the main evidence. Now I don't know about every single country but we have some very strict laws regarding mailboxes in America. One this being that destroying a mailbox intentionally is a crime on the federal level. He destroyed three of them on camera with clear intent. To make things even worse another federal crime here is mail theft which he did when after hitting the mailbox he went through the mail on the ground 
and stole some of my coupons. Not important mail, but it didn't matter, it was still mail theft. My neighbor did not even think to dress up nice to go to court as well and instead wore a dirty shirt and looked like a mess. He did not even bring a lawyer thinking that I was the one in trouble instead of him. Despite him being told that he was getting tried for a federal crime, he went on about how I built a dangerous obstacle in the street and I destroyed his truck, that he lost his job because of it and wanted me to pay him a year of that salary as compensation. Nothing that had any rhyme, reason or legal precedent, the judge said, are you aware that you are here today for committing a federal crime? I'm willing to reschedule the date and give you ample time to get a lawyer. Neighbor, I don't need a freaking lawyer. I just need to tell you this a-hole to give me the money I deserve. He did not care and by the time he realized that he was actually in trouble, he acted like it was a joke. He mocked the judge and dared to try and throw him in jail for something that was harmless according to him. That a mailbox was only like 20 bucks at the store and if I wanted to be a baby and sue him for that much, he would give it to me. Due to it being a repeated problem and him not caring, he was going to prison for destruction of federal property and mail theft. Not to mention needing to pay huge fines to the government for it. He was angry when they took him away and screaming that he wanted his damn money and the judge was an idiot thinking a prank was a crime. He did get told by the judge that having a concrete reinforced mailbox was not against the law, but it might be a good idea to not keep it. Things could happen that I could actually end up at fault for. I did not mind removing it and putting up a normal mailbox again, now that I knew neighbor was gone and not coming back. A jerk and a moron of a neighbor turned a one-sided feud into prison time for him. And yeah, ripe stars, that is probably one of the stupidest crimes you can commit. Don't ever think of running over your neighbor's mailbox just because you are angry at him. Either way, the next one is titled Police called on me for doing my job. So I work for a water company carrying out repairs on burst water mains on an on-call basis of one week every two months. This particular job happened about 8 years ago, we get a call out that a major pipe feeding a large housing estate had burst and needed repairs ASAP. We head to the yard about 11pm at night to collect our gear and get the plans and drawings of other utilities in the area of the work. So we arrive on site, set up the traffic management as per regulation, speak with the inspector that called us out for an exact location of repair, too much water to mark in the usual way, we set up our barriers and work lights around the work area. We get our steel saw and cut a couple of meters of tar out ready to start breaking the tar out of the road. Just as I started the jackhammer, going Mr. Sleepyhead comes stomping down the street in his slippers and dressing gown looking rather perplexed took my ear protection off to see what he wanted, I could tell it was not to offer us a coffee. He then proceeded to tell me that you can shut that damn thing off and F off until it's daytime. I explained that it was emergency work and that we could not have 600 properties get up and have no water in the morning, so it has to be completed now. And our work was fully understood by the council and the police. We then get the usual bollocks of do you know who I am, I refrain from telling him that I knew exactly who he is, he is an irritating asswipe who was stopping us from working. He then starts turning the air supply off so I cannot use the jackhammer, which was ever so slightly annoying. He then started that he knew the police chief inspector and would have me arrested if I carried on. I said that I have to carry on as per my emergency work order and if he carried on obstructing us I would have to call the police to get the job finished. Needless to say, he did it again and said, call who you like, I will have you arrested and sacked by morning. By now I was tired, cold and wet and started to get slightly irritated by his actions so cue malicious compliance, I go back to the van and ring the police to explain that we are out carrying out emergency work and we are being prevented from completing it by one of the local residents and explain what he is doing to stop us working. He stomps off in his now soggy slippers and I pour the coffee, about 40 minutes later headlights appear in the distance so I thought great, just what we need so we can get done and recharge by 6am, hopefully. Mr. Sergeant and Mr. Constable arrive and come for a chat to find out what the hell is going on and his words, why the hell are we doing it after midnight in the first place. So then I proceeded to explain that the water main had burst and we need to get the supply restored by 6am to save between 1500 
500 and 2000, only a slight exaggeration, people having no water in the morning when they get up. He then realized the job needed to be done and toddles off for a word with Mr. Sleepyhead. Before long we can hear the shouting from down the street. It then goes quiet and he comes back down to us to explain that the guy was a sandwich short of a picnic, a British euphemism for a nut job, and that they are going to have to hang around in case Mr. Sleepyhead started playing stupid games again. So we fire up the compressor and start jack hammering again with my back towards the police car to save anything pinging off in that direction. A few minutes later the machine driver toots his horn to get my attention. Mr. Sleepyhead had only come down the road carrying a piece of timber, lumber for you American folks, and was in the process of getting arrested for disturbing the peace. I honestly laughed so hard I nearly pissed myself, who the hell is that stupid when the police are around. And just in case anyone is interested, we were back on by 5.30am and had a coffee off Mr. Sleepyhead's neighbor who was highly amused because he had seen the whole incident out of his window and his only disappointment was his surveillance cameras did not pick up the video and he only had the audio to share with his mates. Apologies for the long winded explanation, I hope you can follow along. Malicious compliance is that he told me to call the police and he would have me arrested but gets himself locked up instead. And the next one is a petty revenge story. I was working for a staffing agency as the branch sales manager a few years back. My new boss was and is a complete shothead, no idea what he was doing, had never worked in the industry, started pitting managers against each other to determine loyalty and support. We had a small office in the back of ours that he would use from time to time. One day when I was in the office taking some lunch, I found that he was still locked into his email. Considering how much I disliked him, I snooped around a bit. I found out that I was getting fired, that sucked but I had a few irons in the fire already so I was ready to move on. I immediately started hiding what was left of my business cards all over the office, in individual files taped under keyboards, under desks, under chairs, taped to the back of wall decor, between sheets of copy paper, etc. All over the place. I still have a friend who works there and after 4 years they still find a random card somewhere in the office at times. It's a nice reminder of how they screwed me over. My boss by the way was fired about a year later for bad production. The branch is bleeding to this day. And the next one is another petty revenge story because I just cannot get enough of it and it starts like this. So I work in a very small office, 12 people at the whole company. On Monday I had some extra chocolate covered pretzels that I had made for a party. Right after lunch I put them out on a plate in the break room to share and then went back to my desk. My desk is right next to the break room but I cannot see directly into the room from my seat. Probably about one minute after I sat back down, co-worker Dale comes in from outside through the back door. The back door is also near my desk and the break room so I can kind of see them both. Dale walks into the break room then leaves to go to his desk. I was curious to see if he took any pretzels so I poked my head back into the break room. There were two chocolate pretzels left out of the 30 that I had set out. This guy took practically all of them. I was kind of bummed since I was excited to share the snacks with everyone, Greedy Dale took that away from me and he did not think that anyone would notice. So here is how I enacted my petty revenge the next day. Dale always parks right next to the back door because he often leaves throughout the day to do deliveries and career type things for the office. The back door auto locks but you can unlock it from the inside before you leave to disable the auto lock. So it's locked overnight but Dale usually leaves it unlocked throughout the day so he can go in and out. That next day I had some work to do that didn't require me to be at the desk all day, I was around different parts of the office. However I took notice of every time Dale would leave. Three times on Tuesday I locked a door behind him and closed the vestibule door so no one would hear if he knocked. Every single time he had to walk around the whole building to the front door. I was never suspected. He could not even blame me for not answering his knocks since I was not at my desk. Suck it Dale, I will guard my treats more carefully next time. Next one is titled, I know the owner. Yeah, you don't. Years and years ago I worked retail as a miner. This was in the 80s or so in some non-corporate businesses you could get away with this. I looked more grown up than most kids my age, probably because I dressed more adult than was usual for a dinky little gift shop. There were several Karen encounters but this one was my favorite. Karen, you have to give me a discount, I know the owner. He always gives me 50% off of everything. Me, lady, I really doubt that. Karen, I know the owner. 
I'll get you fired if you don't give me a discount. Me, oh would you please, please get me fired. Karen, what? Me, he is a slave driver, he doesn't even pay me. I wanna be fired. Karen, what? Me, the owner is my dad, and now get out. He would never give anyone a 50% discount because we'd be losing money. She is all red with embarrassment and rushes out without buying. I had to put back everything she brought to the counter, but it was worth it just to yell at someone. I was the only one in the shop that day since I was covering for my dad, so I knew I would not get in trouble. Oh, and yeah, I was not being paid, but my parents paid for my college so that I did not have any student loans, so I guess that was fair compensation. And the next one is titled, She Hates Pregnant People. I am 8 months pregnant, 26 female, and this takes place in March. A little over 2 months ago, I was in a coffee shop enjoying my evening with my 3 kids, 2 female, 4 and 6 female, and I just ordered hot chocolates for my two oldest babies and milk for my youngest. I also ordered a hot tea for myself when my name was called. There was a woman about 60 or so there and we will call her Karen. She saw me reach for the tray with the drinks but she got to them first and threw the drinks in the trash crying about how I was being irresponsible and should not drink coffee being pregnant. The thing was my oldest, we will call her Lucy, was standing beside me and she started crying and hugging my leg. The barista saw this and she made us more drinks and again, Karen did the same thing. Lucy was crying harder, which got my other two kids, we will call the four-year-old Sophie, and the youngest will be called Erica, to start crying too. I then picked Erica up and Karen snatched her from my arms. Here is the conversation. Karen, how irresponsible are you? First ordering coffee for you and these very young kids and now holding a child while pregnant. Give me my daughter now. Karen, no. I will hold on to her for you. I'm a better parent than you. Me? Listen, lady. I ordered milk for my youngest, hot chocolate for my other two, and tea for myself, and you have no right to touch any of my kids. Give me my damn daughter, Karen. At this point, the cops came. I assume someone in the cafe called them. Most likely, it was the barista. The cops asked me if I wanted to press charges, since where I am from, it is illegal to touch anyone without theirs or their parents, and if it is a child under 16, permission. I told them, yes, I don't know what happened after the cops took her away and gave me Erica back. The cafe refunded me for my drinks, made more and gave them to me and gave me free pastries since they felt bad. I tried to decline it, but they insisted. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, dealing with a Karen does not sound so bad after all if you get free pastries. I mean, honestly, if you're at a cafe and they have some banger chocolate chip cookies, I would not mind dealing with a Karen for a few free cookies. If you have ever dealt with a Karen in public, please feel free to let us know in the comments about what happened. And the next one is titled, Residents are more important than you. So I live on a cul-de-sac where I rent a back house from my landlords. There is another elderly tenant who lived inside the landlord's house I was very close with that we will call Good Sir. I have these neighbors next to me who I had gotten along with for as long as I lived there before the pandemic. The husband, we will call him Mr. Chill, has been especially cool with me. My neighbors have three cars and between them, two belong to Mr. Chill and the wife who we will call Mrs. Hypocrite. And the other car belongs to their daughter, we will call her the Hawk. When the pandemic hit Mr. Chill's family for reasons that didn't make sense to me, suddenly stopped parking their cars in the driveway and would park them all on the curb in front of their house as well as the hawk taking the spot I usually parked in more so than her parents did. Finally, after a few months of this going on, I see the hawk outside and I ask her if she wouldn't mind sharing the spot that I used to park at with me, explaining my situation with being overworked and exhausted from my job. She gives me an annoyed look and just responds by saying, I use it. I realize I'm wasting my time, tell her never mind and go inside. Not even five minutes later, there is a knock at the door and it is good sir letting me know that the neighbors want to talk to me. Mrs. Hypocrite is standing there all pissed looking, asking me what the problem is. I explained to Mrs. Hypocrite what I said to the hawk and she apologized for coming off so angry and says, you know street parking is what it is. It is first come first serve and we are not parking to try and give anyone a hard time. The conversation goes nowhere, but we end it peacefully. About a week later, I am parked in my spot for a change and my girlfriend comes over to visit with our child. It is summertime and it is hot. Towards the evening, I get a knock on the door and it is good sir. He says the neighbor wants to talk and I see Mr. Chill standing right there and he just asks if my girlfriend could move her car because she has got a bunch of curb behind her but not enough for another car to fit. Before I can even say anything, Mrs. Hypocrite shows up out of nowhere and goes off saying, I'm so sick of going back and forth about this. 
She is double parked and there's not enough room for any other car to fit. I understand that she's your girlfriend and she's visiting, but I believe residents should get priority parking first. It looks like you guys are trying to save the parking for yourselves, and I'm not dealing with this anymore. She needs to move her car. I'm in complete shock and have a lot I wanted to say, but I don't and just go inside to ask my girlfriend to move. She thinks they are hypocrites and move just because she feels like that's all they have to feel proud of in their lives. The only reason I gave in to them is just so my landlords don't get involved and risk it turning into them not wanting to renew my lease with me, otherwise I would have said something. Funnily enough, even though they got pissed at my girlfriend for double parking, the hawk is the queen of doing that on our cul-de-sac without Mrs. Hypocrite telling her anything. Last year in November, Good Sir was not doing too well and went into hospice care, eventually passing away unfortunately. He gave me his car as a gift and a thank you for being family to him. I now had two cars, two spots and an idea. Enter petty malicious compliance. Mrs. Hypocrite said that street parking is first come first serve and that residents should have priority over the parking and well then, so be it. I only need to use one car and the other one can just stay parked. Since I'm a resident, I decided to park whichever car I'm not using in the spot that I would normally park at and swap them out every two weeks in rotation. My girlfriend parks where Good Sir used to, the Hawk, her boyfriend and Mrs. Hypocrite have not touched that spot since I started doing this since one of my two cars is always there. As a little bonus too, Mrs. Hypocrite put one of their cars they are not using back in the driveway and when there is a party going on and all the parking is taken up, the spot in front of their house is sometimes open and since, again, I'm a resident, the guests have taken all the other spots, well, I guess I do need a spot to park at, after all, right? Sorry Mrs. Hypocrite and or the hawk, I guess you'll just have to park around the block and take a nice walk to get to your house. I am only following what you believe the parking rules should be. Rest in peace, good sir. I miss you every single day. I'll always love you as my own family. And yeah guys, what's the saying? Just a few bad apples can ruin the bunch or something like that? I guess every awful neighbor, especially if it is a family, you should not single out everyone in that family because there might be some good people in it after all. However, then again, imagine being a good person in a family full of Karens. It must drive you crazy. Either way, if you have enjoyed the stories until here, please don't forget to like the video because that would help me tremendously. The next and with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.